My children are eight and 11. I'm watching the property market and I'm very concerned how I get them on the property ladder in 10 years time. In today's episode of Property Investing with Abby, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about how property prices double in 10 years and how on earth our children are gonna afford it and not get trapped in generation rent. As a parent, you wanna set your children up for the very best start in life. Most of us open a junior ISA, which is like a saver, which you save into and then it builds a pot of money up. The challenge with opening a bank account for your children a junior ISA is money depreciates when it's in the bank and there's a really good chart that I like from 1971 and it shows what £100 was worth in 1971 which was £100 and today it's worth £5 so keeping money in the bank for the next year, 10 years isn't really smart. For me I'm a property investor so I know when my children get to the right age I will have properties that I can you know gift to them let them get started with. The average house price right now is just under £300,000. Shelter and KPMG got together uh, a few years ago and they predicted by 2034 the average house price will be over 900,000. The best way you can help your children right now is buying them property now. Putting a tenant in and holding it until they are of age. But right now I'm buying a lot of property and I'm using off plan. So I'm reserving property right now, waiting for the interest rate to come down. So I'm getting it at a good price. I'm then going to put a tenant in, Tenant's gonna pay me rent, which pays the mortgage, and I'll make an income. So if you've got savings in the bank and you don't know what to do with it, if you've got equity in your home, now would be the time to buy property. Using limited companies, it can help mitigate inheritance tax. There's lots of really cool ways you could do this, but the moral of this YouTube today is to get buying now. Because in 10 years time, it will be so much harder to get your children on the property ladder. And again, in another five, six, seven years time, it will be harder again. So an example of where I've done this with my children is a property called 49 Ashton Drive. So it's about five minutes from where I live. It's a nice detached house with a garage and garden. I bought it for 190,000. Right now it's worth about 220,000. The tenant pays me 1,150 a month. So I make just over 500 pounds net profit. And that 500 pounds, I can either have it or I can put it, bank it for my children. So in 10 years time, that house will probably be worth about 400,000. And I'll still have the, the small mortgage on it. Because I think the mortgage right now is about 130,000. And the mortgage is interest only, so the mortgage isn't being paid down. The 130,000 mortgage, 400K asset, I could sell that and then my children can take the difference between 400 and 130. So what's that, 270, they've got that in cash, they can go buy a house, use it for a deposit or whatever, or they can keep it and move into it. Now, if I decided I was gonna be like every other parent and just save for them in a junior ISA, there is no way I'm gonna create 270K of wealth for them. Most parents put away about 10 pound a month for their kids, whereas I'm making 500 pound every month for this property, that's going in a bank account just to maintain, keep up the property, because property needs maintaining. The tenant's been in for about three years now, it's a great tenant. And again, if the tenant leaves, I'll put a new tenant in, I'll deal with the normal landlord stuff, but that's gonna be one from one of my children's future. And then I've got another one for the other child. And what I'm trying to do is build up more. You could even get your children involved in this. So if you think this is a great idea, you love what I'm saying, you think, yeah, I need to get it started with property, get them involved with you, explain how it works, get them come into view houses with you. Children love that. The best place you can start is yourself on your personal wealth and your personal finances. So we have um, a bit of a test called a wealth appraisal. The wealth appraisal is appraising where you are now and where you want to get to. The W is the why. This looks at why you're doing what you wanna do, what your goals are, what your mindset's like to help you start on the right path. The E is your education. It looks like at your attitude to learning and how much you're gonna put in because knowledge is power and knowledge is gonna help bridge the gap to help your wealth. A is for assets. It's assets and accumulation. It looks at, do you have current assets now? or do you need to have assets you can get that passive income? L is leverage. This looks at what are you leveraging? Are you leveraging other people's money? Are you tax efficient? How can we help you with leverage in your life to get where you wanna be? T is for time. This stands for where do you spend your time? How can we make your time more efficient, more effective, and how much time do you commit on your wealth? Are you spending your time with your loved ones doing what you want to do every day? Or are you trading time for money and doing a nine to five job? And H is habits. 
This looks at your behaviors, your habits. What do we need to start doing differently so that you can live the life that you want? So we call it wealth and it's our bridge from where you are now and where you want to be. Make sure you fill it in to the end and it's gonna email you your personalized report and it's gonna help you where you need to start to fast track you to wealth.